Hi, it's Roy Aquavite, and this video is about the top five whiskies that I always like to have here in the cabinet. This video is in response to the Scotch Test Dummies video where they did a top five go-to whiskies and they challenged the other YouTube channels to do the same thing and just get a bit of discussion and conversation going on. And I think that's a great idea. So this is my response, but typically being me, I found it really difficult to get it down to just five whiskies. And I found that I was struggling between whiskies that I always like to have in the cabinet and whiskies that I really love that I can't reach past that may be much more difficult to get now. So what this is, this first video is going to be one of two, and this one's going to concentrate on the top five whiskies that I always like to have in the cabinet. That is, the evergreen staple whiskies that are easy to get your hands on, you always have them around, and they're not that expensive. In the next video I do, I'll cover more of the kind of top five whiskies that I really struggle to reach past, the ones that I really love, the ones that, you know, they might be a bit more exclusive or a bit more limited edition or harder to replace, but nevertheless, they have a firm place in my top five favorite whiskies. But first, if we talk about the top five go-to whiskies that are always available, let's say. There's a couple of caveats here because it's really hard to get it down to five, right? And what I ended up having to do was just literally pick up two bottles and decide if I just had to take away one of those, which would I pick in order to put together a list of just five. And if you think I've missed something out that probably should be in there, by all means, share it in the comments below. People love to know what you're drinking at home as well. But let me start off with a couple of notable omissions that almost made it. And I'm talking about these two distilleries. Buna Haven have lots of good expressions out there. Now this never made my top five, but the Buna Haven 12 alone kind of deserves to be in there. And the fact that it's not in there is quite notable. So I'd like to mention it now as a, as a notable omission. Um, I love this whiskey, I really love it. And as soon as the last couple of drams in this are finished, I will be replacing this. And there are other Buna Haven standard core expressions with and without age statement. Still fantastic whiskies and fantastically well presented that are worth a go as well. Also the same goes for Old Pulteney. This is the 17 year old which is really tough to get your hands on now. This has been discontinued and Old Pulteney have just launched an entire new range. Regardless, the feedback from that is already quite positive and it looks like the quality isn't going to drop with the shake up in the expressions. Another couple of distilleries that deserve a mention and that are not there would be Lechik. The Lechik 10 year old, especially from Tobermory and Mull, is a fantastic whiskey that I always like to keep in the cabinet but it's not in the top five. Likewise. There are no Bal Blairs and there are no Anox, another two favourite distilleries of mine. But let's get on with the ones that actually made it into the top five. Lagavulin, eight year old. Now this is a relatively new expression. This came out in 2016 to celebrate the 200th anniversary of Lagavulin um, in reference to a comment that was made by Alfred Bernard when he visited the distillery and talked about how delicious it was at eight years old. And it's true of this expression that came out. Yes, it's young, but peated whiskey is very young and engaging at that age, and people that like peat enjoy it at that age. But there's also more to this, there's more complexity, and what really got me and what hooked me about this whiskey is that underlying sweetness, especially on the mid palate and through to the finish. There's this kind of icing sugar, cotton candy, really sweetness that just, that's ever so, delicious and addictive. And that wrapped together with the powerful peat and presented at 48% ABV just makes for a fantastic package. Yes, it's almost the same price as its 16 year old counterpart, but as I've said before, that just goes to show how good value the 16 year old is. And this should kind of be judged alongside the same lines as perhaps an Arbeg 10, and on price point it matches that quite nicely. I love this whiskey, and when this bottle empties, this will get replaced again. I'm very happy that this, this has been made part of the Lagavulin core range, and I love this stuff. This deserves to be in everybody's cabinet. Got a bit of a problem here. This is an empty bottle. 
Now everybody knows what I think about this whisky. This is Deanston 12 year old. This is one of the best 12 year old out there. In fact, it's one of the best whiskies out there. Deanston, the spirit itself, it seems to be very, very good at whatever cask it goes into. But I think this is at its absolute best in terms of balance, value, and just engagement at this, in this expression here, 12 years old. It's fantastic whisky, 46.3%, natural presentation in terms of filtration and color, and a nice 12 year age statement on there as well, all for less than 40 pounds in the UK, and pretty much available everywhere. It's just a fantastic Scotch whisky. I think that everybody knows how much I've been evangelizing about this whiskey and fortunately most of the people that go out and try it on my say so have fed back to me that they're loving it every bit as much as I am, which is great to hear. I would suggest that Deanston 12 has to be in everyone's cabinet. And of course what I have to do right now is go out and replace this as quickly as possible. Kilkerran 12. Now, Kilkerran is made down at Glengyle Distillery in Campbelltown, and it's not been around that long. The 12-year-old is a fairly new addition. You can also get an 8-year-old cask strength. But in terms of price versus enjoyment, this is really, really difficult to beat. It's not as obvious a whiskey, I would say, as the Deanston with the Deanston's kind of sugary, barley sugar sweetness at its core. This is a much more subtle, understated, complex dram with a puff of, of smoke on the back of a kind of biscuity, lemony citrus, uh, slightly vanilla, but ever so slightly agricultural note, but everything is very, very subtle and there's a butteriness holding it all together as well. This is one of those drams that really doesn't reveal itself fully to you at first and it's only when you spend some time with it, and especially when you sip it in contrast with other things, that you really come to understand how fantastic this is. If you're put off by the kind of spring bank funk that exists in a lot of the other expressions from these producers, it's not as apparent here. It is there, but it's dialed down quite a bit. This is a fantastic whiskey, one of the best examples of how balanced a whiskey can be at 12 years old and it's not that expensive, again around or less than £40. Kilkerran 12, I recommend it to everyone and it's fantastic good quality whiskey. Unbelievably, I don't have any of this in my collection. Now, we're very fortunate in the UK that we have the ability to go to local specialists and local supermarkets have a, a really quite decent range of whiskey most of the time. And if we're stuck there, we can go online and order from the online specialist retailers, we can order from auctions. But nowadays, especially if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can simply get it delivered next day with no delivery charges. We're really quite spoiled, and I understand fully it's not the same everywhere. But of course, I'm in the UK, and my perspective is from the UK. So, Alexa. <laughs> Deanston, back up, done. Kleinleash 14. This is fabulous whiskey. Anything that comes out of Kleinleash, I am utterly, utterly blown away by. It's the texture of Kleinleash. It's that, it's that kind of oily coating, waxiness they say. And then that, again, that barley sugar core that's at the center that's just so, so, so delicious. The quality of this is never in doubt, and Diageo need to be applauded because they actually present this very naturally at 46%. And despite it being a very high quality 14 year old whiskey, it doesn't seem to creep much above 45, 48 pounds or thereabout. So reasonably decent value as well, and very, very available everywhere. This stuff is gorgeous whiskey, and I don't say this lightly, this is number two in my top five list of something I will always keep in the cabinet. I love the stuff, and I think you would love it too. So that leaves us at number one. And I think this is a little bit of a cop out, but I'll make a point here. One of the hardest questions to ever ask in whiskey, especially when we people are just getting into whiskey and they come and they ask you, what is your favorite whiskey? It's really difficult to answer because there are so many things that you're enjoying all the time. But I've kind of got an easy default answer and I'll share that with you now and I'm sure some of you perhaps will have heard me say it in the past as well. 
This whiskey had such a profound effect on me as a whiskey, but also in my life and my life trajectory, that I can always go back to a place when I sip this whiskey. When I go to this dram, it's a bit like coming home. It's that feeling of safety, of grounding, of going back to a, a place in my whiskey journey that I can always firmly remember. And it's nice to kind of keep that perspective and go back to it time and time again. And it is, of course, Lagavulin 16 year old. Now this is everywhere. Most of the pubs and hotels and restaurants that you go into in your life has probably got a bottle of this sitting on the shelf and it can mean that sometimes we look past it. But this is one of the best ambassadors for Scotch whisky that exists in the world out there. It's converted so many people to whisky. It's converted so many of my friends like it did me from being just casual whisky drinkers to being really, really interested in what whisky can offer. It's the wrapping of the powerful smoky notes with, with the kind of medicinal notes and then that sweetness that kind of wraps it all together. It's just such a compelling dram, yes, they openly admit to colouring being added to this 16 year old. Yes, it's chill filtered. Yes, it's presented in 43%. But it has a 16 year old age statement on there. And in the 10 years that I've been drinking this whiskey, it's hardly gone up in price at all. This is a 16 year old whiskey, which in the UK you can still buy for 55 pounds or less, which is amazing value for a 16 year old whiskey. And when it's this compelling, I think it deserves to be in any respectable malt drinkers whiskey collection. For me, it's an easy answer to say that this is my favorite or one of my favorite whiskies. But I never, ever, have a collection that doesn't have Lagavulin 16 in it. And for that reason alone, this deserves to be number one in my top five go-to whiskies. So there we have it. So the next video is going to look at much more exclusive whiskies. Whiskies that I find it difficult to reach past. My favourite whiskies that I am really, really loving right now, despite the fact that it's going to be either expensive, difficult, or now or impossible to replace them again. So please keep the discussion going, put your comments in the section below and let me know what your top five whiskies are that you always love to have at home. I'd like to say thanks to the Scotch Test Dummies for this cool idea and I hope that the rest of the channels get involved in sharing what their top five go-to whiskies are as well. Until next time, slancha.